You gonna pick it? What about the other one? You looking for snakes too? You gonna pick that one? Buggy. Buggy, you. <laughs> Alright. Well, Daddy will go over here and pick it. Them ain't itching you. What you looking for, Brody? Mushrooms. You looking for mushrooms? You see any? Hey, look, look hang on now. Look right here. Right there under that grass. Yeah. Here, we're going to put it in this bag. Maddie's got the bag. All right, go go get the other one right there. There's one more under there, ain't it? Yeah, you got to watch them stickers. What do you got? Let me see that. I didn't see that. Let me make sure we got the right. Let me see that. Let me see it. Let me see it. Boy. Yeah, that's right. We're putting them in a mesh bag. There's one more right there in that grass. Look down. Right down. Look, Brody. Right there. See it right in that grass? That's kind of hard to see, ain't it? Look down. Right there. What you found, Brody? How many you got? Is there a bunch of them right here? Mm -hmm. These is dirty, ain't they? Put them in that bag she's got. Boy, the mosquitoes is bad, too. We done dropped our glasses. Y'all, what we're doing today is picking some chanterelle mushrooms. We're going to do a video on canning these things. So, Brody and Maddie's down here. Brody loves to pick mushrooms. He calls them mushers. But we're going to gather up. This is a pretty good patch right here on our property that I've been kind of letting go. When they're getting to the end of their life, really, they're starting to, uh, I'll get you a better look. They're starting to shrivel up. But these are bad, dirty. And you should cut these with a knife, but... I'm not going to give him a knife to cut them with, so we're kind of picking them, and we'll just have to clean them up later. But I pinch these stems off out here usually after he picks them. It'd be better if you cut them from the ground with a knife, but we got a mesh bag that we're putting them in. We're going to pick all of these right here, and I'll get the camera and let you get a look right here at what we got going on. See, we've got them pretty thick. And like this, you got to watch whenever you get a, a cluster like this. I come ahead of him and make sure that that is a chanterelle and not jack-o'-lantern mushrooms. But I've pretty well done walked over this. And, uh, and you can see there's lots of little ones coming up. But this is where water kind of runs when it rains. But you can see all of those chanterelles. And I don't know what they tearing up down there with that tractor. Sounds bad, don't it? 
but they're all in here. So what we're going to do is pick these. Roscoe's running up and down. There's a ditch that runs through this property right here. The mosquitoes is terrible. So what we're going to go ahead and get as many of these picked as we can. And uh, then we're going to take you back up to the house and we're going to can these things. Think a bush hog and a brush pile down there, ain't they, Brody? Help. Pinch the what you can, just pinch that dirt off, and just make it a little easier to clean. Okay. But the ones that's real bad, you ain't got to worry with. Just pick the prettiest ones, because I've got uh, oh, two gallon bag fools oh, at the house. Bro. But while I was deciding. Oh, bro. Well, leave that one. Just pick the ones that ain't broke. Nasty. Nasty. The bag. Wait, hold on. Put it in the bag. Broke. <laughs> yeah, that is broke. And back. All right, is that enough? All right, y'all, just in a few short minutes, you see we've got that. But uh, the reason I went ahead and picked some of these at the end of their life is we've got two gallon bags of them at the house in the refrigerator that I've been saving. So that's why we decided to can them. So we're going to, we're fixing to go up there and, and start canning on them. There's bees right there in our bee box. This is down here on our property, right in the edge of a cornfield, and there's pumpkins over there. I'll show you. We just riding around this corn, coming up all down them roads. Maddie and Brody having fun. But I'm gonna show y'all. We planted these pumpkins about. I don't know. I'm gonna get off right here and look about four days ago and I just went down through here with a hoe and hacked out a hole we dropped like three to four seeds this is all seed that we saved that row is probably about a hundred yards long or better there's three of these hills right here and we left a middle in there that we can teal with a tractor tiller so we can keep it clean and then that hill and I don't know if you can tell how that's kind of healed up down the middle <laughs> these kids is having fun y'all that's what life's all about get out and enjoy things all right y'all I wanted to tell you one more thing about when you're gathering mushrooms you use these mesh bags and most everybody's gonna agree that that's for the spores to drop out so you can kind of reseed these mushrooms. But one other thing that I wanted to point out to you about these, when you plan on cooking them, they need to be clean. Now I will take them in the house and wash them, but I can just dip these in here and you see the water just rushing out of there. This is a good way to pre-clean your mushrooms before you take them in the house. You can take them in there and, and put them in the sink and wash them, yes. But this just takes a lot of the work because I can kind of agitate them. And uh, I'm not worried about if I break these up or, or they massacrate it or whatever because I'm going to cut these up in pieces and can them and have them ready to just dump in a meal to cook. So uh, I'm, I'm not worried about having pretty whole mushrooms right now sometimes I do if I'm gonna cook something and I want them to look pretty on top of the meal but when you're cooking them it don't you know I'm not worried about presentation and this water this is rain water that I can't 
So that, that takes care of a lot of the fine dirt and stuff. Now your big pieces, obviously the leads and stuff, you're gonna have to wash off because they're gonna get caught up in that bag as well. But I did just want to tell you that's that's one of the other uses for this uh, mesh bag. So we've got them fairly clean. We're gonna take them in the house and we're gonna wash them. We're gonna get ready to uh, to can mushrooms. I'm probably gonna take a break and get a bath and all that before I do. So we'll see y'all here directly. Okay, I've got some water running in my sink. Now these have been rinsed off. These have not been just really, really clean. Now these in these bags have been in the refrigerator. They're clean. So we're fixing to go ahead and get started canning on those. Uh, now I'm going to save you guys a good bit of time right here. If you're familiar with canning, then you know this process. Uh, with mushrooms, from all of my research, now I had not never canned mushrooms, but I've canned a lot of other stuff. You want to keep, uh, it says 11 pounds, 10 to 11 pounds of pressure for 45 minutes. Some says an hour. So we're going to go somewhere in that ballpark. You can, you can tell by looking at the first jars. I'll know when they come out. Uh, and we've got a couple of varieties I wanted to show you on these chanterelles. How this is, they've got the ridges in there. And then this is a smooth chanterelle. Uh, and they're all, we're picking these in the same area. So they just kind of popping up this and that. I'm soaking these in the sink here. So you want to get these as clean as possible. Now I'm going to tell you, with mushrooms picked out of the woods, especially after they've been there um, a couple of days, it's going to be almost impossible to get them 100% spotless. So I, I'm just going to tell you that. You can scrub them with brushes and whatever else, but you're going to wind up just tearing mushrooms up. And like I said, it's preferable to cut these from the ground with a knife. You've seen in some of my other videos that I cut them with a knife. But with my little boy, he likes to pick them, and I'm not going to tell him he can't pick them. So, uh, and just so y'all know, wherever he's walking around, you see my little boy barefooted down there, picking in mushrooms and this, that, and the other. I've done walked ahead of him. I've done checked. I've made sure there's no snakes. I still warn him to watch for snakes, but I've already looked and made sure there's no snakes. Now, he did get in some ants that I did not see today, so take that for what's worth. But I do watch him and watch what he's doing. I'm not just letting him, and I'm teaching him, hey, we don't pick this, we don't pick that, and I still have to watch because he's only two. So before I get scolded by everybody about a kid out picking mushrooms, I'm he's staying under my care. He don't go in the woods picking mushrooms or with nobody else in the yard. And I realize mushrooms grow in your yard. They grow here in our yard. He knows not to pick them. We're teaching him that. So I just wanted to be clear on that beforehand. But this canning process, I said I would save y'all a bunch of time. If you know how to can, you know how to use a pressure canner. This don't have acid in it, so you've got to pressure can mushrooms of any kind. Uh, I've got my, my uh, let me turn the camera around just a little bit. Okay, right here I've got a, I think it's a Presto pressure canner. If I'm not mistaken, lid locks. If you're not familiar, you've got a plate that goes in the bottom that keeps your can from setting right on the bottom. I've got water up to about right here. Uh, I will sterilize my jars. I've got jars over here I'm washing. In this boiler, I've got my flats and my rings that I'm going to boil to make sure they're sterilized. Uh, before you do this, make sure your jars is clean. Now, the way that I'm going to do my jars is I'm going to put about an inch of water in each jar, put it in the microwave for about a minute, two minutes, uh, whatever, and, and that will sterilize them. Uh, a lot of people say boil your jars. Whichever way you're going to come out with the same result, that microwave is faster. It will work. I've canned, I do that with my jars for tomatoes and, and green beans and whatever else I'm canning. And I'm probably going to attempt to can some meat. I have never canned meat, but I'm trying to slowly back away from using the free, freezer and refrigerator as much as possible. So that's canning, smoking, drying. I dried mushrooms last year. I had a window screen that I dried several mushrooms on, 
I did not have good results. Yes, it dried the mushrooms, but after that, I, they really wasn't that good. You try to rehydrate them. I, I, I didn't prefer it. So here we are with this process. We're going to can these chanterelles. I've got two gallon bags. I've got a sink full and what's on this cutting board. So, uh, but yeah, to save you some time, put your water in there. Uh, I'm going to put, and I've got two different jars. I do want to mention this. Now these are not clean yet. I just got them in there soaking. Pint jar, half pint jar. I'm going to put a, probably a half a tablespoon of non-iodinized I dye my salt in this. Uh, in here, I'm probably going to put a quarter of a tablespoon of salt. I'll put my mushrooms, and I'm going to cut these mushrooms up in pieces, and I'm going to pack them in this jar, and then I'm going to put the water in it, and uh, then I'll put a little salt on top. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started cutting some of these up. I'm just going to cut them up in pieces. Just however, I made this knife. Y'all have never seen this one. The sycamore wood handles I put on there, but I like this drop down, but it keeps that blade thin so the tops drop. This is one of my, it turned into a kitchen knife. I didn't get to keep it out in the hunting shed and trapping stuff. I hear Roscoe at the door. Let me go let him in. He thinks we're eating. Me all you see it around my kitchen. Now this kitchen is lived in. Uh, I'm going to give you a heads up. Be leery of them people that their kitchen is spotless. They probably don't really use it, but... <laughs> you take that for what it's worth. That's just some free advice. If that kitchen is spotless, they don't use it much. Now see, I'm going to put just a little bit of water. In fact, I'm going to pour a little bit out. You just want a little bit of water in there. And we'll just set that in no microwave. But I'm washing these jars out. I'm going to get me a couple. Ready to go here. And the reason I'm doing these small jars like this is uh, whenever I get enough mushrooms out and open them that's canned to put in a meal, uh, I'm not going to use no whole bunch of mushrooms on the average. That's why I'm going to do all these small, I could do, I have a lot of quart jars, and I, this is really all of these small jars that I have. You see, I had this box here that I pulled out of the cabinet back there, they stashed in our laundry room. So I'm going to put that on two minutes, and, uh, and I'm going to see what it does. I can't remember exactly how many minutes I did before. I'm just going to be honest with you, so, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and finish washing the rest of these jars, and I'm not putting a lot of soap in them. I've washed them with soap, and then I've soaked it back with water, but I'm just kind of going back over it because when jars have been stored for a length of time, they tend to get grease and whatnot, just stuff kicked to them. They don't just voluntarily come right off. But I, you want to make sure that your jars is clean. You don't want anything, especially on the inside. And if the outside ain't too clean, it don't really make no difference. But I like to be able to see through my jar. Just me first. And I am not one of them people that is afraid of every little speck of dirt and everything's got to be spotless. I mean, I don't mind... I'd rather it have some dirt on it than come out of some restaurant somewhere where I don't know what's been poured and put on it. I just, I know what's out in the dirt out there. Or most of what's out there. I trust it more than I do them fast food joints. 
I ain't gonna lie about that. But we count down about 30 something seconds here. Let that get done, we're gonna get back to cutting these up. Okay, this has started boiling, so I've cut it off. They don't have to boil for a certain length of time. And I've still got my spaghetti we had for supper over here in my way. I'm gonna sit it. I've got to cover it up, but I'm letting it cool before we put it back in the refrigerator. But I've got my rings there. Once that boils, and it boils now for maybe a minute, but you don't really have to boil something for a period of time to kill a bacteria. Uh, a lot of people want to make you think, well, you've got to boil water for a certain amount of time to kill everything. Once water reaches the temperature that it boils, which is, I think, 180s, or right in that neighborhood, it kills whatever's in there, the pathogens, then. That's what you're doing here. So once it reaches boiling temperature, it's, it's done what it's going to do. But now, for the sake of the cleaning part of it, there's a little grease or something on there you think might need to come off. Now, it may take a little boiling to get that to come on off. That's a different story. But I did put the uh, microwave on another two minutes, so we're going to be at a total of like four minutes. When I reached to grab the jar, it wasn't really hot as I wanted it to be. Okay, I hear my jar is cut off. I like to got that finger. Did y'all see that? Be careful with that. It hung in that finger now. Oh. Now I need to get me this tile. And my garbage can right here is in my way, y'all. I'm going to slide this garbage can over here. I'm throwing in the pieces. Actually, I need it right here. A vial of garbage out of that in it, so. Yeah. Okay. These are hot. See them steaming? Just so you know, when you get a scalding hot jar, don't pour cold liquid into that jar. We're going to start packing mushrooms into them. I'm going to show you something while I'm pulling all of them on out. I want you to see how this water... Now reckon what that would taste like. That's the water that drained out of these chanterelles. That's a big, pretty chanterelle. We have had a good, a good year on chanterelle mushrooms. Okay. I think I'm gonna have plenty of jars. Okay, we got them done. Well, we're gonna drop one of these jars. I'm gonna put some of the whole ones in. Not that big of a hole. Some of these whole mushrooms, just so I got bigger pieces to cook with, depending on what I decide to cook. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start warming. this water in this Presto cooker. This is my weight that goes over the steamer. But I, you don't put that on right off the bat. You let it steam for a little while before you put that on there. Well, we found a half a teaspoon one, so that's what we need to do. We want a half a teaspoon in this paint jar. And I want a quarter of a teaspoon, which will be half of this, in these other jars. Now, I do want to put that on top before I fill it up with water. We're going to set this right here out of the way. Okay. Lids are ready. Okay. I have a good dry rag here. 
on these jars. Make sure that you wipe the top of all these with a clean rag because that seal is important on top of that. But I need to pour the water in first. Uh, and actually, I need to pour hot water in there. So let's do this this way. We've got some water hot right here. So. Cut that off. I'm going to pour this hot water. I may want to find a funnel. some head space just like anything else green beans whatever you're canning most of them call for about an inch of head space uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put some more water on there be warming I've always heard not to use metal for this I don't know why but this is a plastic one of my son's spoons but you want to mash in this and make sure the air is out of this out of these vegetables It'll get trapped down in there. So that just mashes the air out. And do that to every jar. I don't know why you don't need to put uh, metal in there. You can use wood or plastic from what I understand. Okay. When you mash down, you see these bubbles come to the top. There's a good many that come to the top. You want to get that air out of there. That's what you don't want to trap in that canner. I'm going to bring you over here that you get a good look when you see that air come out. And I'm watching the screen instead of what I'm doing, so <laughs> I about missed a jar. But you just want to mash in there until you make sure that the, all the air is out. You see them air bubbles coming up. That's air bubbles. Okay, now that, that part's done, wipe this top down again good, because that's after you've poured that water, you want to make sure that's good. Over here, get you a flat out of that water still pretty hot. Well, I don't, you don't want to, you want to make sure that ain't pushed. I pushed it down and popped it. You don't want it popped. You want to put your ring on there, and you just want it snug. You don't want to just bear down on it. Once you set your jars in there, now remember I've got water up to here, about an inch or so. You don't want it covering your jars. You just want it up about two inches once all the jars are in there. So, now when you pull one out, you see this jar, this flap? Let me make sure you can see that. There's some discoloration and whatnot on there. Throw that one in the garbage. You don't want to, it, it just, it will not seal when they like that. I like to forget, but you gotta make sure. It's easy to forget this stuff. You can be a veteran and have done this and get busy, especially like me, worried about filming more than what I'm doing. And, uh, and make a mess out of something so but now I hear so many people talk about pressure canners exploding and and blowing stuff all over everywhere and I mean all kind of stuff I, uh, I have never had any of that happen if you follow some if you can follow simple instructions you can use a pressure canner you just can't walk off and leave this and go do something else you've got to stay when I when I put this on I'm gonna sit down over there and pull out my iPad or my iPhone or either get on the computer it's sitting right there and I'll watch either Mike Reed Outdoors or Log Cabin Loons or Dave Canterbury or Richard Gene the Fishing Machine I'll find somebody on YouTube to watch 
and uh, sit there and enjoy that while I'm. We gotta redo this. Y'all ain't. I ain't even gonna tell you what I just did. You'll figure it out. If you figure it out, I'm proud of you. It can happen, it can happen. Find one that's damaged. Right there, there's a split. If you find something wrong with them, put them in the garbage. I do reuse them, but you cannot reuse them if you don't inspect them. That's why most of the time people say, you can't reuse them. Well, you can if you don't throw them away when you find something wrong with it, because if you wait for that to show up and it not to seal, well, then it ain't going to work for you. Now, I'm aware when I'm holding this camera like this that I don't make the best video. But the water is up about an inch. If I can get a... I'm going to try to get... Okay, my battery died while I was trying to film that. Now, that steam is trying to fog up my camera lens. But anyway, that's what it looks like. Okay, I had to restart. My battery's died in my camera. That right there, don't buy them. They're not, not no good. Okay, on these canners. has a mark over here that says close open. You line that up with that mark. You push it down and it seals. Now what I do now is I turn this on up on high. I turn it up on high and I watch my pressure gauge. Now when my pressure gauge starts climbing and it gets to about 5, that's 5 PSI, we're going to cook at 10 PSI. I'm going to keep it at 10 for an hour. You can run it up to 11 and shorten that down just a little bit to like 45 minutes. I feel safer just doing 10 in an hour. I've got, I mean, the 15 minutes is not going to matter. So what you do is when I watch it get to 5, I start turning my heat down and I gradually pull it down to about medium. And uh, because I've canned on this before with this setup, so I know about how it's going to react. Once this steam starts coming out of this port, pretty steady. This thing back here is going to pop up or start trying to pop up. Once it pops up, then I drop my weight on top of that to seal that off. And once that's on there, it'll start building up pressure then. So we're going, we've got it on on high and we're going to start watching this. We'll catch y'all up in just a little bit. Right back here, this little thing has popped up. See? Now we're starting to get steady air out of this. If you can see up through here, I don't know if you can tell against that. You can see that steam, it's a steady flow. At that point, we're still on zero on our gauge. Drop that on, that seals it off, and this is where it starts building pressure. Okay, we're up on, I'm gonna bring this down to medium on the heat. Now I have a leak right here on that, that I need to 
to reseal this where that screws in there but it won't really matter as long as I maintain pressure now one more thing I'm going to mention I won't start my hour of cooking until I reach 10 once it reaches 10 then I'll start my one hour timer Okay, I'm just a hair over 10. I've cut it on back down to between medium low and medium. I'm just slightly below medium. But I'll start my one hour cook time. It's 10.35, I'll cook till 11.35. I'm gonna turn it on down a little more cause see it's still easing up. We're probably at about 11 pounds now, which is, we may can cut our cook time down to 45 minutes if it stays there. I'm just easing that down till that quits. You just gotta sit here and watch it. And at some point, you'll figure out here pretty quick, within about five or 10 minutes, you'll get it where it's set and still, just as long as you watch it. But this is why you can't just walk off and go do something else. You gotta stay here with this. Otherwise, you know, it's not a, it's not a ticking time bomb like most people say, if you'll stay here and watch it. Now, if you walk off, you liable to come back and have a mess. <laughs> you go to getting on Facebook or get a phone call or go rambling off, you know, go put your clothes on the line, you might have a problem. Okay, I did want to show you one more thing while this is up, if you want to, uh, and let me, just for safety's sake, put one of these glove things on, you can release a little bit of this pressure. Be careful, that is very hot steam coming out of that. It can burn you. But you see, you can ease that up and drop that pressure down and it starts to get too high. I don't want to lower it too much. I just wanted to give you that tip. Some of you don't realize that, you know, I can back the pressure off if it starts getting too much. All right. We sit on probably about 11, 12 pounds of pressure. It's 11.35, so at this point, I'm just gonna kill the heat. I'm not gonna do anything else. And it'll slowly taper down. So what I'm gonna do is leave this and just let it sit through the night. I've got three more jars here that I've just poured the hot liquid in. I'll set them on in the morning. And uh, so when I get ready to do them and pull this out, I'll open it up in the morning and let you guys have a look and then we'll end the video. That's my alarm going off to tell me it's time to cut this off. So good job. y'all it's the next morning and I don't know if I really explained this this twist locks like when you line that up you just twist it to lock it and you want to make sure see those are pressed down on the top they don't move so that's sealed Make sure your jars at this point are finished tight. All right, well thank y'all for watching my video. I hope you learned something about canning mushrooms. We'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors.